Okay, back at Gino's Air Cool. A couple little tips I want to give you. I don't know if you're interested or not. There's two uh, things that are handy when you're doing transaxles. And uh, I'll show you over there on the wall. I don't know if you can see them or not. I'll move this over a little, a little closer here. Yeah. But uh, you can see all these shims up here I got. And uh, gears. Yeah, there are 82 gears there. New ones. And I don't have any spline, but they're coming. I ordered them. There's crankshaft end plate shims there. Uh, side cover shims for the uh, swing axles. Uh, IRS shims here and pinion shims for the big nut and over here is just some of my four bolt shims up there I got a whole bunch in the other room I got to get a couple more of these long uh, things here to put up uh, Pete Pete told me about put everything on shims I said on these long uh, on these long things that hang everything then you have it right in front of you Good idea. I never did that. See, I, even me, I, I learned something. You never think you know it all. If you do, you're in the wrong game. There's always somebody comes along and can teach you something. And believe me, I've learned every day that I've been in business. That's for sure. But getting back to this, there's two micrometers that come in handy. And uh, right here they are for me, anyhow. Uh, this mic here and a one inch mic and uh, this thing here I measure the thickness of the gears when I weld them and uh, you have to uh, uh, narrow them down sometimes they swell and you have to do that and uh, make sure they're all the same uh, thickness and everything. I have an idea of where they are and I'm not saying because somebody will will say oh that's wrong or something. You have to figure it out for yourself on that. I have my own way of doing that. And this is nice for uh, setting up pinion shims, uh, ring gear shims, the whole nine yards. I use both of these constantly. They're, they're just a handy tool to have and uh, I have a bunch of them. Over here's a depth mic for measuring deck, lit or, uh, deck height on the motors. And uh, I don't know if you can see it. I got the jig here. But down there's a brand new line boring bar I got. And two deck height gauges. Actually, three deck height gauges and a, uh, a bore. Uh, gauge down there and over there's a mic that's sitting on there to set up the knives and down there some more micronomers you never have enough of them that's for sure and uh, that's uh, that's just my way of thinking about some things everybody has their own way of doing things I thought I'd bring this little uh, video up anyhow super deaf here no, nope, I don't have the spider gears in it yet, but I will put them in it. That's down the highway. I'm working on a stock box here. I'm trying to get done, and uh, I'm done for tonight. Uh, the gear stack over here is done. It's set up, and uh, that's the ring and pinion I showed you today how I put them on. Everybody has their own way of doing stuff when it comes to transactions. So uh, I was taught by the guy at uh, the VW school, and uh, that's how it is. And I want to show you something. I shouldn't say this, maybe. Uh, here's an axle, chrome molly axle, clean broke off. I'm not saying whose they are. But be careful which chrome molly axles you buy. And this is where they always usually break, right at the spade. Gone. 
and uh, make sure you buy a good grade of axles. I like Urco's axles, the $700 ones. Oh wow, that's expensive. Yeah, it is, but you don't break them. So that's why you buy, pay now, and don't pay later. That's my philosophy. So uh, anyhow, talk to you all later. The Gino at Gino's Air Cold, you see those Urco side covers. I do have an off-brand up there too. But uh, I have the swing axle. I started using Urco side covers. I like them. Talk to you all later from Gino's Transaxle Performance.